Seven minutes after the hour, welcome to a Friday. Again, it's the third day of July for 2020. Well, Thursday afternoon, over a dozen protesters arrived below the Amador School District office to raise awareness towards reopening schools. While schools are closed for summer, what reopening will look like in the fall is heavily dependent on the concerns of the community spread of COVID-19. School administrators also face challenges of state funding, insurance coverage, and managing students both on and off campus. Parents at the protest echoed the importance of education for children and the setback another round of distance or hybrid learning can have on a student, both intellectually and emotionally. Stakeholder committees are currently working to develop the best possible plan for August that will, one, provide options for families to choose from, Two, allow the most amount of time possible on campus for students whose families want that. And three, be safe and financially responsible. According to District Superintendent Amy Slavinsky, families will be informed by July 20th of the plan for school in August, allowing about three and a half weeks before school begins. Slavinsky went on to say, we ask that families continue to work with us, be as patient as possible, and believe with us that we will be able to open school with options for families so everyone is safe and students are learning. Meeting a special session on Thursday afternoon, the Amador County Board of Supervisors have approved issuing letters urging the cities of Amador County to encourage the wearing of face coverings to help contain the spread of COVID-19 as the number of cases increases both locally and across the state. The supervisors, all wearing face masks, met in person in the board chambers and received comments from the public, both in person and through video conferencing. Public comments were a mix of those in favor of wearing masks and those opposed. Advocates of masks, such as Supervisor Frank Axe, said the masks were effective in reducing the spread of COVID-19 and warned that increasing cases could lead to further economic shutdowns while opponents claim that the masks were uncomfortable or ineffective. Governor Newsom has ordered certain businesses shuttered in a number of uh, populous counties, including Sacramento and San Joaquin. And there was some discussion that Calaveras, with its increasing caseload, could be next. Yesterday, Calaveras County Public Health reported 13 additional cases of COVID-19 in just one day. This is the largest increase of positive cases in any reporting period in that county since the pandemic began. And as we head into the Independence Holiday Weekend, Amador County Public Health reported two new cases yesterday in Amador County. One a male in his 50s from Ione and one a male in his 20s from Pine Grove. As of this morning, total positive cases of COVID-19 in Amador to date are 26. Currently in isolation at home, 13, one hospitalized, and 12 have recovered. In Calaveras County, a total of 53 COVID positive cases to date, 18 have recovered. And a former Amador County school official faces embezzlement charges. Jackson police reported Thursday that they are recommending felony embezzlement charges against a former county school official. According to the Jackson Police Department press release, the school district called them and alleged that former Director of Maintenance and Operations misappropriated funds. District officials say that Robert Milligan is suspected of using a school-issued fuel card for personal use. According to the JPD, an investigation into Milligan's time as Director from July 2018 until his resignation in February 2020 revealed that he allegedly used the gas card approximately 54 times. Now, that amounted to nearly $5,000, which police say he allegedly used for his personal car and gas cans. Milligan surrendered himself to police in June after a warrant was issued for his arrest. He was cited and released. He will appear in court on October 9th. And a possible break in the disappearance of a Sutter Creek girl a man wanted in connection with the case has been arrested. Amador County Sheriff's Office says that 22-year-old Joshua Anthony Martinez was arrested in Los Angeles. He now faces several charges related to sex with a minor. Before his arrest, Martinez was questioned in the disappearance of 17-year-old Victoria 
uh, Marquina of Sutter Creek. Authorities say the girl was last seen in October and is still missing. Before his arrest, Martinez was found in Mexico. Now authorities are working to figure out if the teenager went across the border with him. And Calaveras law enforcement are asking for the public's help in locating a Jenny Lynn man who gunned down a neighbor's pet. According to reports, Roger Wayne Anderson took off after the dispute in a brown, pardon me, make that a blue Ford Expedition. Now, according to sheriff's reports, around 7 o'clock in the morning Wednesday, deputies responded to the scene off Scenic Valley Road in Jenny Lind after the report of a disturbance. The dog's owner told deputies he was arguing with a motorist that had sped past his home, creating excessive dust. Meanwhile, the confrontation caused the man's dog to repeatedly bark. That's when, according to the pet owner, Anderson came out of his nearby trailer with a handgun and fired four shots, killing the dog. Anderson then allegedly aimed the firearm at the victim and threatened to kill him before fleeing the scene. Deputies searched the area, but Anderson was nowhere to be found. If you know of his whereabouts, call the Sheriff's Department at 754-6500. And it's a maximum enforcement period on California roads from 6 p.m. tonight through midnight on Sunday. Last year, during this uh, Independence Day maximum enforcement period, 21 people died within CHP jurisdiction. Of those 21, 11 were not wearing seatbelts. Additionally, CHP officers made 1,317 arrests for driving under the influence. And that's a look at local news on a gold country Friday morning. From the KVGC News Center, I'm Jim Geedy reporting. Remember, for the latest news, traffic, and weather, 24 hours a day to visit our website. That's kvgcradio.com.